All right, we're going to go ahead and call EPD to order at uh, 601 on October 7th. Uh, everybody's here. Public comment? None. Reading and approval of minutes, what do I hear? Motion to approve. We have, we have a motion, we have a second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Minutes are approved as presented. Reports communications from city officers. Mr. Duncan. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Just things here. We can go. All right. So just uh, three quick updates uh, for the committee tonight. First, um, three new businesses have been licensed at Bridgeway Station, including uh, Lilo and Coco Bubble Bar, Travola Italian Restaurant by Table 301, and Cross Country Mortgage. The 14,900 square foot expansion to the YMCA at 550 Brookwood Point Place was approved by the Planning Commission on September 24th. This expansion will include a new standard size gym, three classrooms for after school summer camp programs, two offices, and a small conference room, restroom, and storage area. So because we still have some ongoing work at the Cultural Center grounds, Friday Night Flicks will be moving into the uh, auditorium at the Malden Cultural Center. Although um, we're going to have beautiful weather on Friday, we hate to take it inside, but with the cleanup activities still going on, uh, we find that that's probably safe for everybody involved. Tickets are free of charge, but we do ask that you get your ticket as early as possible uh, as seating is limited. This Friday's movie is in Canto in celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, and Havana Taste Cuban Cuisine will be our food truck for the night. The amphitheater, um, just kind of give you some updates on that. As we know that the amphitheater roof system uh, was destroyed. And so we have already removed the debris from the stage area uh, and are already uh, have filed an insurance claim and begun reaching out to landscape architects and engineers to discuss how we can build it back better. We anticipate the next roof system will be supported with steel supports and have a roof that includes features that will enhance our amphitheater productions. And we'll have more on that uh, here in the next uh, few weeks a month. That's my report, sir. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Any questions for Seth? All right, that's going to move us to unfinished business, of which we have none. Takes us to new business, Malden ATAX Advisory Committee. Mr. Duncan, you want to hit that? I'm going to actually turn it over to David, who's going to walk us through that. Thanks, David. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman and committee members. So tonight before you, we're going to talk about the Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee. We've passed a threshold whereby we're required by the state to have one. And uh, there's, a, there's a formula of who needs to make up that committee. The committee needs to consist of seven members, at least four of which need to represent the hospitality industry, at least at least two of those need to represent the lodging industry. And you also need to have at least one member that rep represents the cultural organizations of the municipality. And so the function of this committee will be to submit recommend, written recommendation to the city council at least once annually on uh, how they recommend to spend the portion of the state accommodations tax revenue that the city receives and remains after all the other allocations that are kind of set forth in the state law. Um, what I have before you tonight is two matters. One is a resolution that establishes the Malden Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee and its accompanying bylaws. And the second is the appointment of seven applicants to membership on the committee we have received seven applications um, to date for membership on this committee. Uh, six of those applications are from those from the hospitality industry. Of those six, three are actually in the lodging sector. And then we also have one application from someone representing the cultural organizations of the city. So I would request that the committee consider those two items. And if you are so inclined to recommend those for consideration by city council. Any questions for Mr. Deerhug? Mr. Kralin. Excuse me. Uh, so to make this motion, how should this motion go? Would you recommend Mr. Duncan to make two motions? All right, so 
We recommend you make two motions. The first motion would be on the resolution that creates the committee and its bylaws. And the second motion would be to recommend appointment of the seven applicants that we've received. Any other questions? Mr. Kraling, would you like to move? Try. Go ahead. So I'd like to make a motion <clears throat> to uh, full to send to full council the approval or for approval the advisory committee uh, described here uh, for the uh, the uh, state accommodations tax. All right, Mr. Kraling has moved that we forward with a recommendation for approval, the establishment of the Malden Accommodations Tax Advisory Committee and its accompanying bylaws. Is there a second? Second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and that item is forwarded to council with a recommendation of approval. Do we have a motion that we forward to full council with a recommendation for approval, the appointment of the seven ap uh, applicants to membership on the committee? So moved. We have second. that motion from Mr. Kraling. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. Is there a discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and that is forwarded to full council with a recommendation for approval. Do we have anybody that would like to provide public comment in the second period? Hearing none, committee concerns. What do we hear on adjournment? Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. We are adjourned at 6.07. order the public works committee uh it is what 11 after six o'clock have uh, with me uh mr reynolds and miss king um let's see here first of all start with public comment any public comment uh reading and approval of minutes right here 
Motion to approve as submitted. Motion to second. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Like sign. Uh, other less. Ayes have it. <clears throat> oh, boy. Um, all right. Reports and communications with city officer, Mr. Lehman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, other members of the committee. Um, it's been it's been fun the last few weeks. Um, been a little busy. Uh, we've to date we we started about Friday morning about five a.m. and we've been cutting trees, hauling trees ever since. Uh, without having the numbers for today, we've hauled a, a little over three hundred and sixty tons of brush and debris from the roadways. That's just the public works. Uh, we have uh, a separate contractor working in parts of the city. It's in addition to what we're doing. And uh, Seth and I discussed before this, so there's an, another option where we can use the DOT. They're going <clears> to, <throat> DOT and, and the county contractors are also willing to work through the MASC to contribute to our efforts of cleaning up the city. Um, no one got hurt. No, no dam we obviously had damage to property, but we didn't have any damage to any vehicles, any equipment or anything. Um, uh, firefighter and police were outstanding fire department. They were super fun to work with and, you know, they, they did a lot. So, um, we just played our part. So that's where we're at. We're going to keep going at it. We're looking at at least four to six weeks, solid nonstop picking up brush. Um, we, we started working on some of our trails. We were about halfway through the David Bates trail right now, just clearing all the debris that's come down. Uh, we've gotten everything off the stage so we can start using that amphitheater again or at least replacing the structure. We'll just continue with our activities and we'll get through this. So that's all I got to report. One thing I just want to say is thank you. Um, just the whole city, I think, came together from what I saw. Our department was cutting trees. You guys were cutting trees. Neighbors were cutting trees. We're doing everything we can to open up the roads, looking out for one another, going in, helping neighbors who had trees go through their house. We live in a wonderful community. As long as you don't read Facebook. Yeah, it's, it's not. <laughs> so as long as you don't read Facebook. <clears throat> yes. Yes, but yeah, I did do have a tree somewhat in my somewhat in my house. But I was referring to actually like my neighbor Dave. He had a big tree go through his living room. I was lucky enough just to have it go hit my garage. Uh, I'll survive that. A lot of people that uh, really are been suffering. So I love how the city came together for the help. You guys have been doing a great job. I know you're working your asses off. So thank you. Those are guys in the back doing their thing. On a lighter note, the funniest comment I heard last week was from Chief Miller, who said, I want to be a fireman so I can learn how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, yes, everybody came together, as I had no doubt, that's exactly what would happen. So the leadership from top to bottom was outstanding. So thank you all. Well, we might as well. Um, you know, I've talked to Mr. Fleeman personally on this, and so I don't particularly like doing it publicly, but one of the things that's really neat about these situations is watching how a division, a department, a leader doesn't just care about his job here. Um, Mr. Fleeman was working for his employees, making sure they had things as well, as well as the, you know, outside of just our job here, because there were guys who didn't have power at home but came into work to work. Um, and so that's that's such an encouraging thing from our position and you know I did tell Mr. Flame and I have one comment on Friday that the trash truck had knocked over their trash can but but I thought that wasn't a big deal <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but no it, it is such an encouraging thing to see stuff like that happen and and see both the the catastrophic destruction and the grace of people um because we don't have we don't often get to mesh those two things. So while I never want to see storms and never want to see that kind of destruction, it's neat to see the good of mankind at times. Um, and even further than that, it's good to see that when you make great hires, 
with great leadership and good employees and reward them well, they'll come through when it matters. And I think this is this is specifically one of those instances where there was just no doubt you guys came through. Um, the funniest comment I actually heard was from someone at a gas station who happened to be wearing, which I happened to be wearing a Malden shirt and the lady mentioned, you know, I drive through three cities to get to, to get to my job and Malden was the only one that I saw police, fire and public works out doing something Friday morning. So I thought that was an encouraging thing to, to hear as well. So outside, not just within our community, but outside of it, they can see that sort of camaraderie. But many thanks. And one thing I do, a lot of businesses stepped up too. A lot of different businesses I know. I'm going to give a shout out to Ace Hardware, uh, the, the chainsaw blades, doing everything, uh, helping people buy stuff online. Didn't even sign out. Basically, almost on a handshake on a piece of paper. Yeah, I picked it up, and, and they're just letting pe they're helping people out. And you know, I don't think you would have got that at Home Depot. So I got to give uh, Ace. Yeah. I got to give Ace Hardware a real shout out for doing what they could to help. And uh, the employees there who were there Friday, mm -hmm. uh, early, you know, midnight, I think it was 10, 11 o'clock, they were there trying to get help people how they can, however they could. And, and I know there's other businesses that are doing the same. I want to give a shout out to them. Yeah, they, they uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but they, they the um, Woodruff Road store got like four inches of water in, in the facility. And over the weekend, both the Malden one and the Woodruff one were closed. Um, but our sales rep who we work with was Ace Josh. We just called him up and let him know what was going on. He opened up the Woodruff Road store over the weekend. Fire loaded up a ton of stuff. We loaded up a ton of stuff, literally a piece of paper, like this is what we got in a handshake. And uh, that, that relationship is definitely one that's, uh, that, that helped us out. I owe you on a napkin. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically it. We used to, handshake used to be all he was needed before. Thanks to them and, and all the businesses. I'm sure, like I said, there's a lot of other businesses. I'm sure have done a lot of things too. You know, credit to them. Credit to the community as a whole. Any other questions, Mr. Clements? All right, let's move on. There's no unfinished business. Uh, ordinance 1046, sewer ordinance. Yes. Yeah, so back at this. This is the third time. Um, you know, we, we've we've evaluated a change to our sewer ordinance to address issues. Um, with the laterals that go from the property line to the main. Uh, we've had uh, the attorneys look at it. We've kind of hammered out where we want to go with it. Uh, and what you have is the finest, the final cleanest cut. The changes from last time, um, we altered some of the, the language that Daniel had put in it. Um, you know, originally he had put in there that we would do the work and then invoice. And some of the concerns by committee was that we would be taken advantage of by contractors because they would have us do the work and then, and then, you know, so, so we, we refocused the language of, of the ordinance itself to mimic that, which of, of the stormwater program, which says we quote it for you, you pay us when, when you've paid the invoice, then we do the work. And so that we're dealing exclusively with the homeowners and that language is explicit in the ordinance. Um, everything else pretty much stays exactly the same as the uh, last time we reviewed through it. But uh, I'm satisfied with the way it looks. And I, I, I definitely recommend moving forward with this, uh, with the council's input. It's up to you guys. Motion. And second one, read it real quick. Um, no, I was just going to, one quick thing. So one of the concerns we that I had was making sure that we were addressing um, you know, situations that only spoke to being up under our roads, our city roads, our city assets. Um, was there language? I didn't see language change in it that addressed that, unless I'm missing it. Um, number five, no replacement service may be furnished on private roads or private easements. Okay, but that's so we're we're assuming that precludes anything on the backside of a property or anything. Like, okay. Yes. 
If y'all are good with it, I'm good. Um, Mr. Chairman, I make, like, make a motion to forward to full council with a recommendation of approval of the utility ordinance, um, the sewer utility ordinance revisions. Motion to second. Second. Favor say aye. 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 Those like sign. Let's have it. Council. All right. Public comment. Committee concerns. Keep at it. Appreciate everything. Yeah, just, just real quick, um, as we discussed, uh, and I want to get on the record. The uh, we discussed, you know, the newer trash cans, how sturdy and tough they are. Show you a photo of a probably three hundred pound log laying on top of one of our trash cans, and it held it up. Oh wow! So, <laughs> you want to take that as advertisement? I think I think you did well purchasing those uh, those trash cans. So. All right. No other committee concerns. All right. What are here on adjournment? So moved. Second. Who's second? All those in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. We are adjourned. I will call to order our special call city council meeting on Monday, October 7th, 2024, approximately 6.23 p.m. Uh, let the records reflect that all members of council are present, along with our department heads, some of them yawning. Uh, long, long hours. We appreciate that. Our city administrator, uh, clerk to council. Appreciate everybody being here for that. Uh, with that, uh, invocation would be, I believe, Mr. Reynolds. Sure. Uh, bow with me. Uh, gracious Father, we just we just come before you this day, and we're just grateful for the many blessings that you give. We're grateful for this time together to serve um, our citizens, to do the business of the city. I pray that you'll give us strength and wisdom to do this job well. Uh, we pray especially for our frontline workers as they've been out over the last few weeks and uh, will be busy over the next few weeks um, working on storm um, cleanup and, and all those dangers. We're just grateful that we, our employees and our citizens by and large came through unscathed and we just pray that you continue to watch over them. Um, and, you know, just as we see this kind of catastrophic destruction, we're, we're just grateful that we can see both both the, the power in it and also the blessing. Um, while there were so much destruction, there were so many lives that were uh, barely scathed and uh, people who were watched over and people who come together through, through just such a trying time. So we're just grateful to see that. Um, just pray for other weather patterns that are, are coming not quite this direction, but going to hit other parts of this country. Um, we just pray for our city leaders, our national leaders, and our state leaders. Um, we're just grateful again for this time to to serve our citizens. In your name, I pray. Amen. Stand for the pledge. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. 
Mr. Reynolds. Thank you, Mayor. Tonight on our agenda, which you have before you, is all uh, new business uh, that would be considered by this assembly instead of committees we'll consider. I would ask this council, if there are no objections, uh, for a motion to consider the items on our agenda. Oh, A through D, as via the informal method of assembly, which means we will act as a committee of the whole. So moved. Motion, Mr. Matney, is there a second? Second. Reynolds, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed, like sign. Hearing none, the motion carries unanimous. We will consider ourselves uh, as a committee of the whole. First item before us is a resolution for the stormwater project. Um, Mr. Duncan, you want to do that? Uh, yes, sir. Well, I'm actually going to defer to Mr. Fleeman to kind of explain. Do you want to do it or you want me to do it? Oh, all right, I'll do it then. I'll talk about it. We're getting free money. Like, I read it as free money. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 that's all it is. So one of the things that we have been working on is the Oak Park stormwater project. And with that, we had originally uh, received a grant for a certain amount of money. And after the engineers scoped the project, after further kind of just mapping everything out, doing their initial drawings, uh, they realized it was going to need more funding than what we had available. So we went back to SCORE and uh, asked them uh, or told them about the situation. They said that they had some additional ARPA funds available and could allocate towards the project. And so they have, and now they are increasing our award amount without a corresponding match requirement from, uh, they're increasing it to $2,883,851.50. And as such, they also require that we adopt a new resolution reflecting that new amount. And the city's uh, funding commitment still remains at $676,153.50. And so council is being asked tonight to approve this resolution. We were given 30 days from the date we got it or less. And we just could not wait till um, council meeting to, to, to put this before you all. So we'd be past that, that date. So that's why it's before you tonight. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Since this is considered Financial, I would ask our finance committee, Mr. Reynolds, if you would consider it. Taking that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution for additional funding for the Oak Park Stormwater Project. Yeah, I have a motion for Mr. Reynolds. Is there a second? Mr. Craven. All right, thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion to approve the resolution for additional funding for the Oak Park Stormwater Project say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Hearing none, the motion carries unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Reynolds. Uh, uh, Mr. Duncan, back to you. You want to report on the hurricane? Yes, sir. So I wanted to kind of give counsel, I know we've been communicating via email uh, through to sometimes multiple times a day emails to let everyone know what's going on. And then we adopted a new format that uh, kind of was more standardized looking, which um, we adopted from the county. But I wanted to first uh, kind of, as before I get into the kind of condition where we're at, what we've created, what we're doing in the ongoing recovery efforts, is I want to take a moment to, to really recognize a few people. Uh, of course, our department heads have done a phenomenal job through this crisis and this situation. But a few really were with us on the ground every day for 14, 16 hours and did a phenomenal job. Our public works uh, director, our fire chief, and, and a few others have just done a phenomenal job. Everyone's done a great job to step up and, and really handle this situation professionally. But there's a few who are kind of always behind the scenes who you don't always see that really did a top-notch job. And one of them is sitting way in the back, the further most back back there. Lieutenant Daniel Turner, who really was standing in, in chief shoes because he was at a conference. And it was one of those where the storm wasn't predicted to come this way, at least as as much as it did. And so uh, Daniel was was the man in charge and did a phenomenal job. He and I were sitting upstairs at, what, 6.45 in the morning, watching the hurricane come in with no power, listening to the radio, getting updates on our folks in the field, and trying to figure out what we could do to assist them, making sure that they were one safe 
and two, able to coordinate as we were experiencing about 90% power loss throughout the city. And it was, it was a long day, but Daniel really showed his leadership and his ability to, to handle the pressure that we had. Um, and then, you know, every day after that, there was Daniel. Then the chief came back and was able to safely return, which we're appreciative of that. And then Mr. Fleeman, who never, I almost had to force him home one time because uh, he just did not want to leave. He had, he's that dedicated to making sure things get done. But uh, on the 21st, when we have our full council meeting, there's a few others I want to kind of call out and recognize and name and give a little bit of insight into what they did to help make this possible, uh, this recovery, especially one who really saw this, the entire city as, as her responsibility uh, to make sure that they get back on their feet. And, uh, and the folks that it took um, that really stood up that day and those, those preceding days to make sure that we were moving in the right direction. And so... Uh, we'll speak more on that in a, in a little while, and I'll try not to cry when I try to explain what they did because it was such a, a great experience working with uh, all the professionals that we have on staff and, and can't thank them enough. Um, so where we stand today is much better than where we stood uh, 10 days ago as the storm approached. Uh, as of 11 a.m. this morning, 3% of the county remained without power, and here in the city, we're less than 100 Duke customers without power and maybe one or two Lawrence Electric. Uh, which has been a phenomenal feat to get uh, things back into uh, a, a normal condition. Uh, we have seen, although internet remains offline at the cultural center and the sports center, we are working uh, uh, around those issues, um, having staff either work here at City Hall or uh, going back to the old pencil and paper days and just checking people in at the sports center uh, without that uh, web-based technology. Uh, we continue to update our resource guide. It's on the website. And so I appreciate the staff putting that together and, and updating that regularly. Uh, we will be ending the public charging station here at City Hall in the next few days. Uh, but recycling activities have resumed. We had to suspend that when Spartanburg, uh, the Spartanburg facility uh, was without power, but that has resumed once again. And our HR director, Mr. Mark Putnam, continues to check in on staff members without power to ensure that their needs are being met. And our recreation programs are back in full swing this week, although they're going to be busy to make up for lost time. Uh, some closures and changes. Uh, the David Bates Greenway remains closed at this time. We've uh, been able to make some progress into the trail, but it's a pretty lengthy trail, a lot of trees, beautiful scenic trail that we have. But uh, for, the, for safety reasons, we've got to keep that closed for now. But we are working on that. And then, of course, Friday Night Flicks, which I mentioned in the committee meeting earlier, uh, has been moved inside to the uh, stage, to the theater um, for this Friday. We've still got some trees, some debris, and some other issues at the Cultural Center grounds. We've got one tree that's going to have to come down. It's in an un unsafe state, and because its potential fall trajectory is towards the, the amphitheater area where crowds normally would gather, it's better just to keep that uh, area cordoned off for now, and uh, we can do the movies inside. We do have a question to decide upon, and we'll talk about this later, about a concert that's supposed to be held there later this month, um, but we'll talk about that at another time. Um, and then, let's see, just, uh, you know, Mr. Fleeman mentioned how much debris we've removed recently. Uh, it's, it's almost unimaginable how much tree and limb debris came down. Uh, you go through neighborhoods that we just had our folks and contractors work through, and after this weekend, it looks like we weren't even there. Uh, there's just so much debris to, to go through and to manage, to which we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, there are still some resources available at the county, and so we ask that uh, folks that are, are still in need of assistance to reach out to the public assistance line that they have, uh, and there would be some more information in the report. Uh, and to check out our community resource guide that's online uh, as we speak. Okay, so when it comes to storm debris pickup, we have been utilizing a contracted source. Uh, our existing hauler, who who is uh, been working with the city for a number of years, and we continue to see new resources come online. The county just signed a four million dollar uh, debris pickup contract um, with a hauler, and the state just released this afternoon an MOU with the Department of Transportation that would allow us to piggyback off their contractors. And as they're out there picking up debris along state roads, they could pick up roads in the locality as well, in the city as well. And so that's only being made available to a handful of communities. 
Um, they do note that uh, for a lot of the communities, FEMA is only going to cover 75% of the cost. But I believe here in Greenville County, that has now been up to 100% of the cost. Um, so that's uh, a reimbursement that we're going to be getting back uh, through the FEMA reimbursement program. So what we've asked or are asking council tonight is we have uh, a large amount of debris to pick up. And we know that that exceeds what we had budgeted for normal operations throughout the year. And in talking with uh, Ms. Abercrombie this afternoon, we do have about $1.9 million in ARPA funds that we have still remaining. And we have an uncommitted amount of at least 500,000 that we could dedicate towards our debris pickup program. Uh, Mr. Fleeman estimates that we've got probably about uh, $60,000 worth, 50 to $60,000 worth a week of pickup. And that the cost could ex be in the 500 to $600,000 range. We can absorb some of that through our standard budgetary process and wouldn't need a budget modification, at least not today. But one of the things that we do want to ask for is for the uh, ability to use up to $500,000 in ARPA funds for storm debris cleanup purposes. And also asking that council also authorize myself and the mayor uh, to enter into any agreements or memorandums of understandings with entities necessary in order to get cleanup operations completed. So that's the request for Uh, it's time I'd like to make a motion to authorize the use of $500,000 in ARPA funding for debris removal and authorize the city administrator or mayor to enter into agreements, memorandums, understanding with entities necessary or able to do such work. Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Craven. Is there a second? Second. Second in stereo from Mr. Matney and Mr. Reynolds. Sandy, you choose. Any discussion? Sir Matney. Thank you, Mayor. Not, not really discussion, um, more just a question for the administrator. Um, I, I know that our current policy um, uh, requires contractors who do work within the city to haul off their own debris in light of where we are right now. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think that our goal is to get everything off the streets as quickly as possible. Um, is are, are we going to suspend that policy for now so that we can we can get those limbs removed and if contractor comes in and is able to cut up trees and get them off of people's properties that we can just go ahead and do that and not. So what we're doing is we still are encouraging that if you're having it contracted, if you're paying a, a tree company to take down a tree or whatnot to, to haul it off, but we're not going to dispute the point. If it's their word and pick it up. Thank you. No problem. Thank you you, you want to cook up some of my trees? <laughs> I have a chainsaw now. <laughs> Actually, I just got a call from two people. If they could, if, they, if I would mind, they came over to my house and take the wood and cut it up or they can use it for firewood. I told them to have at it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Some good wood out there, that's for sure. Do that good. <laughs> Mr. Crane has got an entire tree. <laughs> <laughs> Cut and haul. Yeah. All right. Okay, any other discussion? Here, none. We have a motion to authorize, uh, I think it would say up to 500000 Is that the count? Uh, okay. Use of not to exceed five hundred thousand dollars from the ARPA funds, or to help removal of of the uh, oh, we used what we said last week, dervish. <laughs> Print side on it. Uh, from that, and authorize the administrator or mayor to sign any memorandum of understanding or contract or paperwork. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Hearing none, the motion carries. You know. Thank you. Uh, anything else from the hurricane? Well, I have one thing. We've heard the department heads and the department all did a great job. 
and they did. But it starts at the top. This administrator was on this thing from morning, noon, and night for every day uh, that uh, was involved in this and kept them going. Uh, I have had never had so many charts and references to go over. This guy tracked everything. The wind current changed three degrees over no wood. He tracked it. I made that part up. But uh, just to show the depth of the knowledge that he went out and got from the county, uh, the state, uh, online, uh, dreamed it up, whatever he did, he put it in a chart and sent it out to us. The communication to this body, I think, was unbelievable. I don't think any of us uh, were lacking knowledge on that. So just uh, kudos to Mr. Duncan. Great leadership, great team. Uh, I'm proud of all of you, including Matthew. So y'all know I like to pick on it, but just phenomenal job. And the, uh, I think it was correct that several people had to be sent home. They were at 16 hours and still going. Uh, that included chief bottle washer and cooks over at the headquarters of the fire department uh, after working all day. And then they clean, washed their hands a little bit and came out and cooked, served food and got ready to do it again. It just unbelievable. Mark looking after, be sure that we treated our people correctly. So everybody top to bottom, Cindy for pulling everything together. And uh, what was it, herding the cats? So we appreciate that. So everybody appreciate it. And Chief Daniel, great job. Extremely proud of Malden team and Malden community. We're getting there. So thank you. All right, and next item, motion to enter into the executive session. Looks like economic development matters, Mr. Madney. Thank you, Mayor. Move that we enter executive session to discuss, uh, to consider economic development matters related to Bridgeway Station and City Center allowed under 30-4-70A2. A motion is a second. Second. Second from Mr. Allgood. Any discussion? Here none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, like, sign, here and none. We will enter into executive session of affairs at approximately 642.
Okay. Rock and roll. All right, we are returning to council chambers at approximately 7.50 p.m. Uh, Mr. Madden, would you like to report out? Thank you, Mayor. Coming out of executive session, no decisions were made, no votes were taken. Thank you, sir. Next item on agenda, agenda is possible action on items discussed in executive session. Anyone have anything? Yeah, none, we move on. Uh, there wasn't a public comment there. Is anybody online? Okay, and there's nobody in the audience. So we're good. Council request. Here, none, what I hear on German. Moved. Motion by Mandy, second by that guy over there. Tree hugger. Let's go in. I wouldn't put that in the minutes. All right. So all those favors say aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Hearing none, we stand adjourned. Eight seven fifty one. Thank you, everyone.